Ezekiel chapter number 23. The word of the Lord came on, came again unto me, saying, again, the inspiration of God speaking to Ezekiel over and over. Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were they breast pressed, and there they bruised the teeth of their virginity. They defiled who they were. And the names of them were Aholia, the elder, and Aholiba, her sister. And they were mine, God speaking. And they bear sons and daughters. Thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem, Aholiba. These are the capitals. We're talking about Israel, north, Samaria with their capital. We're talking about Judah, south, Jerusalem being the capital. And Hola, that's Israel. They were the first ones to go into captivity by the Assyrians. Played a harlot when she was mine. She doted on her lovers. And it and uh, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, which were clothed with blue, captains and rulers. All of them desirable young men. Horsemen riding upon horses, trusting in the power of man, the army of men, and not God. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she doted, excessive fondness, with all their idols. There is the idolatry. She defiled herself. So Israel North was involved with idolatry. They trusted in men and armies rather than God. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt. And we already read that Israel carried away idols from Egypt. Where did Aaron get the idea to, to make a cow? That was an Egyptian god. Probably maybe even after the Egyptian... I mean... He threw in the gold and all that and out popped the cat. Oh, come on, Aaron. You can have done better than that. And do you know what that partying and that nakedness and the music and all that, do you know what that was for a worship service? That was the Egyptian worship service. So you know what you get the like thing in a church today? You got an Egyptian. You know what gets when you got the idols in the church today? You got Egyptian. And God told his people never to go back. For in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised her breast with of her virginity, and poured their whoredom upon her. Wherefore I, God, had delivered her into the hand of her lovers, the Assyrians, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. And you go back and check the Old Testament. We've read it. We, dis we, we studied it. It is a historical fact that the Assyrians came and took Israel captive. Before Judah got into trouble. And th these discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters. And slew her with the sword. And she became famous among women. For they had executed judgment upon her. So this is Israel North. And he says, Son of man, there were two women, the doors of one woman. Well, one mother, verse 2. That would probably be um, the women of Jacob. It would be Rachel or Leah. Judah was of Leah. Joseph, Joseph split into two, Ephraim and Manasseh. Most of them are, were from Leah. Rachel brought her own idolatry in. She had Joseph and Benjamin, and Joseph split it into two, his two sons. Now, one thing to, to stop and look at here before we get in verse 11. Israel North. Never had one king that did right in the eyes of God when you read. Judah had kings that did right. 
there were revivals and repairing the temples and Passovers in the line of the kings of Judah, but never Israel. And when her sister Aholiba, Judah, saw this, saw the captivity, she was more corrupt in her in her or in Orient as irregular, excessive, no rules, love. Would you describe that today in America? We got men marrying men, women marrying men. That's in Orient. That's not what God designed. You got people in love with their pets. And in whoredoms, more than her sister in her, in her whoredoms. So you say, all right, let's get a Christian president in the White House. Why? Judah had Christian, well, let's not say Christian. They had godly kings in their line, and look where they are. The godless nation went quicker than the God nation, but the God nation still failed and still ended up with burnt, destroyed city with what you would call Christian kings. And God said, you did more worse than your sister did. You had the Passover celebrated two or three times in the line of Judah. None in the line of Israel. And we are in the middle of Ezekiel. We are in the middle of uh, Jeremiah's life where we already know by studying Jeremiah and Lamentate, the city is destroyed. A Christian president is not going to get the nation right. It's a heart condition. And the heart here is irregular love. Last verse in Revelation 4 says we are, and I'm not quoting the verse completely, but we are made to honor and give worship to God. And when we give it to Satan in the world, that's an inordinate love. Then she and her whoredoms, more than her sister in her whoredom. And we've, we've read that a couple chapters ago about the whoredom. And we know that through Ezekiel, the whoredom is not buying a woman and lying with her. It's the idolatry. She doted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, the same ones that took her sister. She slept with the enemy of her sister. Does that sound familiar with America? People are being killed all over the world today by an enemy called Muslims. And in America, oh, they're just nice people. Those are radical Muslims. But these are not, you don't even know who, they, you are Judah. You don't know who the army is. You have no idea. Her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed most gorgeously. Horsemen ride upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw, this God speaking, that she was defiled, and they took that they took both one way. What's that one way? It's not God's way. It's not God's way. That she increased her whoredoms. Is that God's way? He said they took one way, and one of the way they went is whoredom. Whether it was idolatry or women, is that God's way? No. When she saw men portrayed upon the wall, art, The images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, that's red. Jeremiah 22, 14 we saw. Girded with girdles up, upon their loins. Oh, men wore girdles. Exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads. They were wearing bandanas. Different colors. All of them princes to look to. Authority of government officials. After the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. So they were looking at the Babylonians like, oh, they're just a bunch of hunky young men 
They're the athletes of tomorrow. They're the sports people. They're just all oh, just paintings and, and the National Geographic and the magazines at the checkout. Look at those. I wish I'd be like that. Oh, son, will you grow up? Will you be just like them? Well, what about God? Who cares about God? Look at those men. And as soon as she as soon as she saw them, with her eyes, she doted upon look at that word doted. Keeps coming up upon them, and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. Uh oh. We're seeing why God sent Babylon. They were trusting in Babylon. They were relying on Babylon. They were falling in love with Babylon. And God says, Why don't you just go down to those people that love you so much and mistreat them? And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love and defiled her with, her with their whoredom. Now it's a sexual love. It's a sexual love that they brought their gods and not God. They are sleeping with Satan. And she was polluted with them and her mind was alienated from them. She completely turned away from God to gods. She has been darkened by Satan. So she discovered her whoredom. 2 Samuel 13, 14-18 And discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her. Like as my mind was alienated from her sister. God has alienated himself from Judah and Israel because of their sin. So what do you think is being said today? Well, God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. According to Ezekiel 23? I don't think so. When you say God loves the sinner, you are violating what Ezekiel 23 says. God says, as far as those people that were sinning, I alienate myself from you. Yet. Yeah. She multiplied her whoredom. She even got worse. And calling to remembrance the days of her youth back in Egypt. Wherein she played the harlot in the land of Egypt. See, God wasn't good enough for her. The world had its map. Oh, everyone is so better than God. Make us a king like the nation, Samuel. She doted upon the paramours, lovers, mistress. Whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, whose issue is like the issue of horses. Um, the anatomy, the anatomy of a particular race of people. Thus, thou callest to remembrance the lewdness. That's a good word. That's a great word to to be attached to children and people of God. It's not a word that goes with God, lewdness, of thy youth, and bruising the teats by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. I got to make a. We are likened to Judah, what Judah's doing. And we see in this chapter, before the fall, Ezekiel speaking, there is breasts and there are. And yet today, one of the biggest cancers is breast cancer. I know Christian women get them. I know all kinds of women get them. But it's just funny how we're reading the end times of Judah and we're having the same problems that we're having in America that they were having. Diseases, famine, war. Therefore, O Holiba, Judah, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, God, will raise up thy lovers against thee. That sound good? The people you trust in, God says, I'm going to turn them against you. Who are you going to trust now? What kind of condition will you be in if you find out the people you loved and trust were against you? What kind of state of reality and of mentalness would you be when you find out there is nobody you can trust? For whom thy mind is alienated from God, 
and I will bring them against thee on every side. Wouldn't that raise fear, anxiety, loneliness? The Babylonian and all the Chaldeans, Pekad, Shiloh, and Koah, and all the Syrians with them, all of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them ride upon horses. No, aren't they just so great? And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, and wheels. Now, I don't know what the wheels are. I mean, I wouldn't think that you would have a, char a chariot and wagons without wheels, but there's a wheels that are separate. We know chariots and wagons have wheels. All right, chariots, wagons, and there's something with wheels. And the closest thing I would say, would you bring it to modernness, like during the Civil War, they would have a wheel, a set of wheels with a cannon on it. But that's way later. And with an assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about. Those are military wardrobes. They are put on for battle. And Jeremiah kept saying war, 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 war. Ezekiel saying chariots, wagons, wheels, armor. Ezekiel saying this is the artillery. Jeremiah saying this is the people. And together with Ezekiel and Jeremiah saying you know what? You're in big trouble. I will, I will set judgment before them. And they shall judge thee according to their judgment. Didn't a uh, Babylonian guy walk up to Jeremiah and say, you know, what? you know why this all happened? Because you guys are sinners. And I've been told by God to let you go. Everybody else has died because of their sins. Why was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and them to go let go? And we read about them in Babylon. Because they loved God and trusted him. And said, don't touch those guys. You just take them to Babylon. Anybody else who stays, you kill. The battleground of the judgment here laid at the at the borderline of Israel, Judah, Jerusalem. If you stayed in the land God told Jeremiah, you're to die. If you leave the Babylon, you will have your life. Why else would they stay in the land after God said, don't stay? Because that's where their church was. That's where their gods were. That's where their worship service. They were sitting there in the streets of Jerusalem playing, praying to Jupiter, praying to Hermes, praying to the, the, the Virgo, praying to Leo, whoever they were praying to. They weren't praying to God. They were taking their children down south and throwing them to, uh, uh, I can't forget that, Molech. You know why they were staying in the land when God said go? Because they were worshiping their gods. Because the God said leave. Babylonia, I'll tell you who to save and who not to save. Those that stay with their gods, kill them. Those that love me will obey my prophet and will go with you. Jeremiah gave no fight. That guy gave Jeremiah a perfect opportunity. He said, listen, you want to go with us? You go with us. It's fine. If you want to go uh, with Goliath, Goliath, whatever his name was, you go back to him. And I set my jealousy against thee. God is jealous of the land because of the idolatry. You don't want God jealous at you. They shall deal ferociously with it. There was in the, there was the Old Testament law that if a husband got jealous because he thought his wife was cheating him, he could bring him or her to the temple, both the husband and the wife, bring him to the temple, bring him before the priest, and there was uh, uh, you know the dirt and the drink and all that. If it proved to be so, that woman, the Bible said, her thigh would rot. And the man would be set free. If he wasn't, if she was faithful, he would bring an offering and would have to repent. 
God says, I am a jealous God when you go against other gods. And he's going to make you rot when you worship other gods. There is a particular judgment against those that make God jealous and are found guilty. They shall take away thy nose and thy ear. Wow. Do you know what Adolf Hitler made his lampshades from? Do you know what the SS troops did with the, with the teeth of the Jews? And thy raiment shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire, and the city will be destroyed by fire. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Naked. You ever seen pictures of Jews in World War II? Stark naked. They would swallow, as recorded, some of their jewelry that you know their family emblems they would swallow them and the Germans would just wait for it to pass through or even sometimes just cut them open to get it and by the way you know when you saw those pictures of those Jewish people naked as we see here you know what you could do you could count their bones their ribs why because they had nothing to do Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee, and thy whoredoms brought from the land of Egypt, so that they shall not lift up thy eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt any more. See, they still got Egypt in their background. You know what's wrong with sin if I toy with sin just a little bit? It stays with you. And even though you say, God, I want to get right, I want to do right, and you do do right, you know what happens? A little bit of Egypt comes back in. That Egypt will never leave you. It's better be not in Egypt. Because you don't think Egypt is bothering you today. But when you want to get right and do right, Egypt comes back. And it causes a lot of problems. And it happens in my life. It may be, Listen, Egypt may be under the blood. It may be gone as far as God's remembrance. But it keeps creeping back up in your life. And it bothers you. And it will taunt you. It may even tempt you. It may even turn you back to Egypt. So thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thou from whom thy mind is alien. Ill. Those Gentiles, those heathens, they've got dogs for pets, they eat pig and Ew. Yeah? Go live with them now. And they shall do de yeah, they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredom. And do you ever find them repenting in Ezekiel and Jeremiah? You don't. God has to send the Babylonians in twice. And the third time they still didn't get right. And he just destroyed the place completely. It's the broad way that men will go. Many. I will do these things unto thee. Because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen. For military alliance. Military support. And because thou art polluted with their idols. Uh oh. So Judah has brought the heathen idols into their land and are worshiping them. And we see it over and over and over in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister, Holia. Therefore, I, therefore will I give her cup into thy hand. They should have learned a lesson from Israel north. They should have looked at Israel and said, uh-oh, we better get clean. And we better get it right. And we better do right. So we don't end up like them. And guess what? They end up just as worse as them. And they're going out of the land. 
Thus saith thus say the Lord God, Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup, deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn, and had in derision, and contain that it, yeah, it containeth much. That cup is going to be more juice than Israel, because you ought to learn a lesson from Israel. And you didn't. So your cup is going to be more of a cup. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of thy sister Samaria. What is that cup? Book of Lamentations. Jeremiah can't believe that there's children in the streets dropping dead in front of him. He can't believe he is seeing women taking their babies and cooking them. There was a king in the Bible, he got angry because one woman came to him and said, King, we ate this, baby, this woman's baby today, and it came time to eat her baby, and she has hid it. Thou shalt even drink it. There's no getting out of it. And suck it out. Thou shalt break the shreds thereof, that's broken pottery, and pluck, it, and pluck off thy own breast. That's what happens when a woman has breast cancer. And a woman pretty much from what I've heard and seen is they're given the option. A doctor will say, you know, it needs to go. But it's still up to you. You got breast removal in the Bible. Now I'm saying there are Christian women out there who, who have breast cancer, but the wages of sin is death. Everyone has sinned, for all have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God. Now, because you got cancer, does it mean, yes, it's because of sin, but may not be a particular sin. Had Adam not sinned, there would be no cancer. But here is a nation that is defiled. God is jealous. They have gone the ways of the heathen. They are in idolatry. They are in whoredom. And God says, You're going, your breasts are going to be ripped off. Aren't we in a country where breasts of women are just flaunted and displayed in bars and movies and all that? Now, I know breast cancer goes all the way back into the Egyptians. They found Egyptian women in the tombs, all that, with breast cancer. But guess what? If that is true, and I, I don't see why it wouldn't be, guess who worshipped idols and gods and pharaohs and everything else? The Bible says, I believe it's Proverbs, for a man... He's enjoyed the breasts of his wife. It says that the breast of a woman is to feed her children. Here, it's God saying, because you have sinned against me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me. There you go. And cast me behind thy back. There you go. Get out of our schools. Get out of our courtroom. Get out of our lives. Keep it in the church. Therefore, bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredom. You don't want me? Then face me as judge. The God said a big mouthful in verse 35. You don't realize what that says. You don't want me? You don't have anything to do with me? All right. You take your sins and you appear before me as your judge. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But aren't we the seed of Abraham? Nope, that don't fit. That don't work. Wasn't I circumcised? Nope, that don't work. The Lord said moreover unto me, Son of man, wilt thou judge Ahola and Holabah? Yea, declare unto them their abominations. So why do I preach so hard in the streets? Verse 36. 
I am to tell what their sins are. They that have, now here they come, right? Tell them what their abominations, right? That they have committed adultery. Adultery, number one. That's a sin. And blood is in their hands. Number two, murder. With their idols, idolatry, number three. Have they committed adultery? So they have committed adultery physically and they spiritually committed adultery. No average human American knows that if he has an idol, he's committing adultery. To him, adultery is just somebody who has slept with someone's wife. He doesn't realize in the eyes of God, if he's got an idol wrapped around his chest, if he's got an idol wrapped around his hand, if he's got an idol that's a piece of paper in a, in a bank certificate box, or if he's got an idol somewhere where he's trusted in the eyes of God, that is adultery. That's why you got to tell them on the street. They're not going to come into church. They're going to be told on their streets, on their turf, what sin is and what God has to say about it. Else they're not going to know. How else they're going to know? Oh, by my Christian life? Really? By being a jerk at work? Yeah, that right. And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass them through the fire to devour them. He said, where can you apply that to Americans? How about turn your children over to religious people who you know have violated little children, little boys, who is of the seed of Satan? We are in a country, we are in a world today that there are groups of people who are ahead of a church who have molested children, and you bring your children back. And yet, you tell your child, don't touch the stove, he's going to get burned. You turn your children over anything but God today. I, you know, I'm wondering... My wife said abortion. I'm wondering if any of those instruments, or anything that procedures they do, I'm wondering if it involves fire. I don't know. I don't want to study any medical stuff like that. Gives me the queasies. But I'm wondering if anything that procedure, or that abortion, has anything to do with fire. I wonder. I bet you there is, but I don't know. Moreover, this they have done unto me, God. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day. I've been in churches where they have Christmas trees. I've been in churches where the people of the church have dressed up as saints of the Bible. Like you really got the right to dress up as one of these people in the Bible. I've been in, in, in churches where they sold tickets to a keg party. I've been to some church alleys where there was a pool and you know it was all bikinis for the girls. And have profaned my Sabbath. Now that's not us. That's Jewish. For when they had slain their children to their idols. Molech. Career. I've got a life. It's my body. Then they came the same day to my sanctuary to profane it. Look at that. Shall we rise and sing a hymn number 487? What would you do today? I took Junior down to Molech and killed him. Oh, praise God's name. Praise God's name. You're living in sin in church. And God knows who you are, even though the people don't. He knows that cigarette you have. He knows that beer you have. He knows that thought you have. And you come into the assembly all holy full of baloney. And God says, you defiled and profane it. And lo, thus have you done in the midst of my house. Matthew 23, 35, 1 Samuel 1, 9. And furthermore, furthermore, isn't that enough? That ye have went, you have sent for men to come from far. Unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came. For whom thou didst wash thyself, <laughs> paintest thy eyes. 
Do you know that there's churches out there that have face painting Jezebels? <laughs> and God said it was profaning and it is done in his sanctuary. Oh. Bang! There it is. You just shot yourself with a, spiritually with a gun. Shall we read 39 again? For when they had slain their children to their idols, children, then they came the same day to my sanctuary to proclaim it. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of my house. Have you got it? And furthermore, they have sent for men to come from far, you know, inviting people out to church, unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came, for whom thou didst wash thyself, and paintest thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. And sat it upon a stately bed. That's the whore you find in Proverbs. I perfume my bed with aloe and cinnamon and my, the good man's away with a bag of money. Come on, baby. When, when it said Jezebel painted her face, what do you think the context of that is? Come on, baby, up here. You got a long time, baby. Come on. Come on, Jehu. Ahab's away. Why else does a woman paint her face when she's trying to look for a man to catch him into her den of sleep? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. You better believe. A table prepared before it. Before the bed, a table. Where thou... Whereupon thou hast set my incense and my oil. Huh? She's burning things for, for smell. And she's got an oil. Mm -hmm. That's sexual in, in, in nature and in, in practice. And a voice of a multitude being at ease with her. And with the men of the common sort were where the common sort were brought Sabians from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their they're just decking her with all kinds of jewels and you know who a man fell in the Bible of this? Samson. He fell by the woman Delilah. Then said I, God, unto her, that was old in adultery. Oh, this whole thing is adultery. Both physical and spiritual. Look at the context. Beds, table, profane, God's house, mascara, oil. Will they now commit whoredoms with her? And she with them, yet they went in unto her, as they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. So went they unto Ahola, and unto Aholabah, the lewd women. That's God's people he's calling. You read Revelation 4, what he says about our church age? The righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. And after the manner of women that shed blood, murderers, because they are adulteresses, and blood is in their hands, murder. For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them, and will give them to be removed and spoiled. And it happens. And the company shall stone them with stones. That's the Jewish law of capital punishment. And dispatch them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters. Well, you've been killing them anyway. And burn up their houses with fire. And it happens. Psalms 137. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of land. That's how God's got to clean out the land. Death and judgment. Judgment and death. You say, well, how can you have? He's going to judge you before you die. And after you die, he's going to judge you again. Great white throne. 
You know, these people are going to be judged twice. They're judged in the land, and they're going to stand before God, the great white throne one day, and give an account. This is a nation corporate. Individuals are going to have to give an account for themselves. That's why I caused lewdness to cause out to cease out of the land, that all women might be taught not to do after your lewdness. I've got to teach other women not to be just like you. You didn't learn it from your sister. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you. They're going to pay you back. And ye shall bear the sins of your idols. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now the last chapter of Joshua. Go there. Let me show you. that Even after Moses. last chapter of Joshua. I believe it is. Let me get there. Last chapter, and we'll start 24, verse 19. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Okay, I gotta turn the page here. If ye forsake the Lord, then they did, and serve strange gods, and they did. Then he will turn and do you hurt. He did and consume you. After that he has done you good. Brought you in the land. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away he, said he, the strange gods, they got them right there. All through Moses, all through Joshua, Joshua is going to die soon. Put away the strange gods which are among you. Incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will ser we serve, and his voice we will obey. And so Joshua, made, where's the idols being put away? It never was. And it grew. And it grew. I'm turning my pages in my bio if you're on audio. And it grew. And it grew. And it grew. I'm turning the pages in my Bible as we go. And we end up in Ezekiel 30 and 24, and God says, I'm going now to destroy you. Look at the whoredoms you have done. Look at the adulteries you have done. And they were doing it during Joshua, and they were doing it during Moses. It's all Egyptian. It's all Assyrian. You need to cleanse your life. You need to get your heart right with God and get it right now.